close out another week here at the Damage Report in truly fantastic style. Now, Fridays are our favorite days because we try to have a little bit of fun to remember why we you know, are alive and all that. Um, and we throw out some trash, that's always exciting. And we're gonna do that. We normally do it with Brett, Brett's the best, obviously. Thank you, Brett, for watching right now. Um, but today we have a special treat and that special treat is Jason Carter. Jason, how's it going? John! CYT, I'm back. And look, <laughs> I have a very special caffeinated drink just for you, John Adirola. This is, I don't know the brand, but it's pumpkin spice something. It's pumpkin <laughs> spice something. And it is yummy and delicious. So cheers, cheers from uh, to the Dragon Spice Family something. Cube. Yeah, John, how are you? I like I like the idea that you filled up a glass half with pumpkin spice and then just a little bit of water or LaCroix. Mm, <laughs> pumpkin spice something. Uh, very glad to have you here. Uh, let me give you an update. I am drinking some too strong coffee. Um, Jason, I have been sick for several weeks, ever since I got back to a trip from a, a vacation in Missouri. And I need to tell you something that you might not like to hear. Okay. Since I went to Missouri like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I have not had a single monster. Well, and listen, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna spread. Hopefully, the only possible misinformation of the show is that I have had for a long time, and this is gonna sound really bad. I've been very conscious of like pressure in my chest, sure. and to some extent, I wonder how much I'm just imagining it. But I decided with some of the stuff I've read about monsters, mm, is it necessary? And so I've stopped. And I do have to say, I don't feel the pressure anymore. Well, so. John. Don't I mean, listen to me on anything, especially medical. Well, I'm first of all, I'm proud of you for turning over a new leaf. Um, I think it's Thank very you. cool that at in your spry um, old age of 25 that you are taking your health. No, I am 26. To be it's, fair, it's, but, also, yeah. excuse me, 26. My bad. Yeah, um, yeah, but I haven't had a monster in forever either. I gave them up, man. It's after I just they didn't taste good anymore. The Java one wasn't doing it for me. I was really jittery. I was talking really fast, and you normally know I talk very fast. So I don't mind so, it. <laughs> um, but this has like, I don't know, it's just so yummy and cozy and it's just, mm, just mm, it's fall in a cup. <laughs> uh, I've recently started having these little cinnamon dolce latte things. They're very good. But anyway, um, that is our coverage of our caffeine addiction <laughs> for the day. Very excited to have you here because you may be shocked to find out the audience now definitely will be that we have a lot of other things we're gonna be talking about uh, on this day. And as I said, we will be throwing out the trash. There's still time to go vote in the community garbage person of the day poll if you'd like to. But um, in just a little bit, we're gonna be leading things off with a little bit of a look back at a quarter century of Fox News. And then after that, we've got some really interesting stories having to do with the pandemic. Companies getting rich while screwing you over on COVID funds. We've got a debate about hospitals in COVID. What should they, what should they be doing? What shouldn't they be doing? Updates on Matt Gates and his truly happy marriage, no problems there, and a whole bunch of other stuff besides. We got a lot of great stories to get to. I hear that Jason has a particularly spicy garbage person for the day. You but know, we don't want to say I, what it is. I won't say what it is, but I mean, you know, the time has come. I, I'm, I was an early adopter of this person, thought he was a genius, but now questionable. He is questionable. Okay. So I will say, there are like a few people you cannot say a negative word about on the internet. You got your like Elon Musk, you know, Beyonce. You got your, well, <laughs> Beyonce, well, why would you say anything negative? About I'm just saying. Her? If you, if anyway, you there's life. several. This is one of those people. So have fun. Oh my God, I'm a little <laughs> bit worried. And I, I love this person too. So we're going to see what happens. Anyway. Um, it's one of the rare times I know what the garbage person is. Uh, with all that said, thank you for being here, everyone, on this glorious Friday. P please hit the like button and share the stream if you haven't already done so. If you want to send us tweets, comments, super chats, all that, we'll respond once we get into our breaks. But with all of that and all of that, Jason, you ready to talk about some news? Yes, let's rock and roll. Let's do it. Okay. It is the 25th anniversary of Fox News, which um, you know is a, is a big achievement, and they're going to be celebrating. But we decided, for fairness, TDR is going to provide a little bit of a different angle on things. So they've hit 25 years. What have they done with those 25 years? Now, you, we, we talk, we do media criticism, we do critical coverage of the media, and we frequently talk about the inane BS that they cover, and we will be doing that later on today. 
But I'm not talking about the recent stuff. If you've been following the damage report, if you've been following American politics for the last three, four years, you've seen a lot of this stuff. And a lot of it is really scary. And you might think, dear God, what has become of Fox News? I've even thought that from time to time recently. But I'm about to make you feel a little bit better and worse at the same time. That's the mission statement of the show. Because the stuff going back a long way was really bad too. So with that, Jason, let's cover a little bit of this. And by the way, the vast, vast majority of all the research on this has been done, not surprisingly, by Media Matters for America. They've been doing like almost the entire 25 years critical coverage of Fox. They deserve an endless amount of credit for that. And they've got, for everything we talk about here, they've got a hundred other examples. Right. But yeah. I want to touch on a few of the threads of Fox over the last 25 years. So one is um, support for war and attacking people who think that we should think twice before invading another country, damn the costs. Uh, so way back in 2003, Fox host Bill O'Reilly said the Iraq war would quote, not last more than a week. I didn't even know that before this. He also said that once the war in Iraq began, those opposed to the action should quote, shut up. Yeah, they, they wouldn't want to like cancel anyone or anything. I mean, they're against that. They're all for free speech. But if you don't support the imperial action of our government, shut up and keep it to yourself. But not for long, because the whole thing's only going to last about a week. Now, we have um, the benefit of hindsight, Jason. Mm -hmm. it, it, it lasted, I, I think, three to four weeks. So it was a little bit longer, <laughs> that war. But um. Yeah, that's just, man, you can make any prediction you want. It doesn't matter how wrong you are and you'll be just fine. Sure, I mean, th that that leans on the same prediction that the president, uh, I'm sorry, the former president of the United States said, hey, you know what, the country will be open by Easter in the midst of like <laughs> the only pandemic we have seen in this lifetime, at least in my lifetime, yeah, Fox News. There's more though, this, this list is very good, very, very good. Mm -hmm. As you said, we, we, we have to really give kudos to Media Matters because they, I mean, just the buckets of, of information they have imbued humanity with is is otherworldly. Give give us some more. Yeah. Oh yeah, I will. And by the way, like they have one one article. They're doing tons of stuff about this, and we're gonna have more in the future. We're gonna be looking back on them for a bit. But um, they have a, f a list of four hundred, and I want to talk about every single, single one of them. But I won't. <laughs> now, um, bad predictions about. Uh, the war, but to be fair, it's hard to make accurate predictions when you don't know anything about the region and don't care to find out. And that lasted for years. Here's a map of the region, or is it? Because that ain't where Egypt is. I'm not an expert on a lot, but I did live in Egypt for half a year, and it ain't there. Anyway, that was in 2010. <laughs> so seven years into our occupation, they still didn't know where we were occupying. Okay, uh, so that's fun. So you know, Egypt is on the continent of Africa, yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. I had to I had to question myself because hey, you know, like <laughs> you know, Fox News is balanced um, balanced and fair journalism, and those journalists go hard for the truth. So I just want to make sure that That's I true. wasn't the crazy one. You know, That's far, true. Well, you know, exactly. It's a de it's a densely packed region, a lot of countries. Like um, some people don't know where Jordan is, but actually, if you uh, head west from Phoenix, you hit Jordan, then Nevada. I think no, and you, and you take um, a hard left at Albuquerque. Then you do. You, you have to take that hard left. Anyway, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna mix things up. We're gonna go back through. We're doing a chronological thing, but I want to play a bit of a video. So the Daily Show has put together just some of the lowest moments, generally having to do with sexual harassment and stuff like that. So go to their Twitter account to see the full thing. I just want to show you a little bit of how insane it gets over there from time to time. There's got to be some downside to having a woman president, right? Something, something that, that may not fit with that office. And many women who get pregnant are blasted out of their minds when they have sex. They're not gonna use birth control anyway. All right, I gotta go. You should stick to the thigh high boots. You're better at that. Lauren, thanks for joining us. You're But what, didn't we, didn't men give you the kitchen? Know your role and shut your mouth. My role is yeah. a woman. Yeah. <laughs> that is just amazing. I cannot well, imagine. Right on network TV. Well, okay, listen. When he was being a douche to Laura Ingram, she's the one that told LeBron and them to shut up and dribble. So I don't feel so bad for her. But the John and everyone watching, what is so interesting about Fox News is that okay, look, you yes, you have a platform to have your opinion. Fox News is born of of people, as if you watch Bombshell and also any of the, the the movies that came out about Roger Ailes thereafter. 
Fox News was born for a specific audience that absolutely has the right to the way they feel, their, their, their speech, their beliefs, their ideology. I get that, right? So you would also think that, hey, with the privilege of television, you would also exact good journalism, right? And also vet the people that are going on speaking to these people about what is happening in their world through their myopic view, through their lens. For Tucker Carlson to tell someone to wear thigh high boots or for Bill O'Reilly to say something, what do you say about? I cannot imagine having a woman president. And also you have two women to, to the side of you that are just like, you know what, Bill, you're right. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's- Well, they probably feel like if they, if they actually <laughs> stand up to him strongly, that could be the end of their career. Well, 100%. That's exactly what I was going to lean on. It's just that they've, Fox News has had, has had an opportunity to do a great job of sending their message, whatever it is, whether or not we agree with it, but doing it with, what's the word, integrity, and also in a way that's not belittling to the people that are watching, and they haven't done that. Sometimes I don't watch Fox News because I do watch Fox News to get a full scope of everything. I'm amazed that the FCC, that Jesus, someone hasn't put an end to a lot of the buffoonery that is broadcasted daily, yeah. daily. Yeah, and and look, some of it is you know like just eventually the impetus for legal challenges. Like there's sure. in the full Daily Show video, there's a bunch of the stuff against Gretchen Carlson that ends up making it into the movie and everything. Um, but then there's also stuff, and we're not we're not generally focusing on the guests in the ones I'm going to be talking about. But they have guests on who talk casually about like Barack Obama being assassinated and stuff like that. Like that's the like the truly vile stuff. Um, but I want to I want to jump ahead to 2005. I'm going to be to to, the, to skip. I'm going to be jumping ahead a little bit. Uh, I think this might have been the first year of the War on Christmas. Fox News aired 58 segments on the War on Christmas in less than one week, and I want you to think about like. All of TYT, all of our shows, the Twitch stuff. If we did 58 segments on literally anything, you'd revolt. Imagine if we just did it on a war on a popular holiday. But that's that's what they did, and they have kept it up to this year. We are launching into the 2021 edition of the War on Christmas, Jason. The war. So, John, jog my memory again because when I hear the War on Christmas, I feel like it's People who who are mad they didn't get that Bath and Body Works sale, <laughs> buy one free one, get one for free. Like I'm confused. That's what it is. That's I would imagine, is. John, and you know, I can't speak for all conservative people, but a lot of the conservative people I know, Christmas is like sacred. You know, Jesus, religion, the Bible. You know, the the foundation of America. We know this. Are, we hold these truths to be self evident, and God we trust. All these things. So now there's a war on Christmas. What? What, what are they yeah. fighting against? Furbies not being available at Toys R Us, which is closed <laughs> down. Like, what, are the, what? What is the war on? You're what, right. Why, why is Christmas so violent lately? Yeah, you can't have a war against the true Christian Christmas because that's you know within your heart. It's a relationship you have with Jesus and all that. Right. They mean. Anything that doesn't glorify the commercialized spectacle, the non-religious part of Christmas. If you stand against that in literally any way, then that's a war on Christmas. Um, so they're really revealing themselves there. Uh, Bill O'Reilly, by the way, you'll be shocked to find out, shows up in a lot of these, especially in the early years. In 2006, Bill O'Reilly said that same-sex marriage was linked to interspecies relationships. Uh, whew, whew. There okay, are well, some ways that Fox has gotten a little bit better, although most of this hatred has now just been transferred over to the trans community. Sure, um, John. Okay, so I am in a same-sex marriage, and I bestiality is not my thing. You know, like I'm not looking to. Oh, you dodged you know, a bullet, right? I mean, iguanas are rampant here in Miami, and I'm not looking to like you know get it on with the iguanas in my front yard, but or or aliens. You know, there's not like an alien that like, coming out of my stomach. You know, like <laughs> Bill O'Reilly, man. <laughs> I bet his mom's real proud. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, so you have the anti, uh, anti LGBTQ stuff that's sure. been there for a long time. They, they had like a solid eight years of some of the stuff they said about Barack Obama was so crazy. Let's see. In 2008, a Fox News host referred to Barack Obama as a African. <laughs> <laughs> Another Fox host claimed that the connotation of Obama's middle name is that he is a Muslim, potentially. 
So there was a lot of anti-Muslim stuff. A lot of he's not, he's both simultaneously too black for us and not black enough, whatever, depends on the segment, but we hate him no matter what. So there was a lot of that. Which, you know, so it's very indicative of, of how Fox News um, has a complete disregard for what they're saying and also how they appear in public. Because you have Harris Faulkner, who's also a woman of color. You had Ebony K. Williams, who worked on Fox News, who are also black, right? African is a colloquialism in some parts of being biracial, right? A African. He's yeah. half black, he's half white. And I've heard that growing up, and I haven't heard it in the connotation that is a pejorative or something that's, you know, considered to be offensive. But of course, the way Fox News heard Curls that dagger is it's absolutely offensive. And it, John, from an entertainment standpoint, it all boils back down to the people who are allowing, allowing this content and the directive and its producers. They know, I, I almost feel like Fox News looks at the old Jerry Springer shows and thinks, how can we be that outrageous on yep. TV while still keeping our journalistic somewhat you know, integrity intact? Like, how can we? How can we yep. shock and awe? How can we be like the TMZ of political news? And they always attach themselves and lean on these old tropes of we'll say things like African, or we'll always attack, we'll always attack the little person, we'll always attack race, sexuality, women's rights, and religion. Those are always yeah, those get great yep. ratings. Nothing is ever founded in actual the the, found, the the cornerstones of journalism, I would imagine, factual and actual reporting and vetting things and making sure that what we spew to the masses is just that actual and factual. Yeah, a hundred percent. And um, you know, I'm very glad that you brought that up. We're going to show an example of exactly what you're talking about there about the TMZing of the news. So they're going to have at one point. We're going to go to the video next. They're they're going to have a body language expert on, which is usually when everything falls apart. But to analyze when at one point Barack Obama and uh, Michelle Obama did this to each other, this is how they intro that segment. Fist bump, a pound, a terrorist fist jab. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. That's <laughs> insanity. But that's what they did because maybe instead of it just being sort of a cute, intimate moment between two people that love each other, maybe they're signaling that they're both part of Hamas. Right. They're, they're, they, are, they are a Taliban. That would be like, <laughs> I don't know, Hillary Clinton and, and Michelle Obama. Sharing a hug. Oh, the feminist agenda is on the rise. They hug. They their breasts <laughs> mashed together. That means that the feminine energy is being spewed into the world. Oh, I mean, don't do it. Stop the madness. Do it. Stop the madness. Oh my God. Yeah, that's just insane. And then of course, there's there's so there's that stuff. It's just ah. Oh. And then there's just a straight lying. So like, I didn't even cover. At one point, there was a poll of support for the Iraq war. It was like 32%. So Bill O'Reilly didn't like that. So he just said that it was 64. He cited that poll and doubled the support. So they will just lie. And here's a version of it. At one point in 2008, on Fox and Friends, there was um, this guy, uh, Stephen uh, Redcliffe, that they called an attack dog. They took a photo of him and made his ears bigger, his nose bigger, his chin bigger. They stretched his head to be vertical and made his teeth yellow. This was not a part of a comedy thing. They just made him ugly in a photo while they criticized him. I mean right. that, I, in some ways it's obviously less offensive than the terrorist stuff, the Islamophobic stuff, the homophobic stuff, but you can't do that. Right, <laughs> Like that's right. insane. Um, that picture reminds me of, and not, to, I mean, just for a correlation of how the media, be it white right wing media or just this is people who want to sensationalize any story, OJ Simpson on the cover of Time Magazine, yes. the Black Mystique, right? How they made him darker, more brooding, more ominous, more nefarious to drive the story that o, that OJ was allegedly the killer of Nicole Brown and, and Ron Goldman. So I'm not surprised that Fox News would do this because. Visually, they are controlling the narrative in that one moment, right? So yeah. all the people who watch in that moment are, are, of course, leaning on the words, accepting the words, and are interpreting the words of the authority, which is Fox News. So if you're showing me a picture of someone like O.J. Simpson, and the and the and the narrative and the stereotype is that all black people, all black men, are these aggressive, murderous people, then I'm going to yeah. buy into that and further perpetuate 
the message I'm trying to be success that's successfully being transmitted. So Fox, yeah. they I will right. give them this, John. They're very smart. They they know they know where their bread their bread's buttered, and they know how to get a reaction out of their viewers. Because at the end of the day, what is it about? Dollars and cents and ad dollars. People that are going to keep coming back and getting them their ratings to to continue to doing the work they're doing. So they, you got to give them kudos right. for that. They're pretty 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 smart, if you will, for lack of a better word, in that capacity. But it's, it's some of the stuff that that, that they've gotten away gotten away with. I mean, talking about the assassin assassination of a president. If me or you even tweeted something even close to that, yeah. The guard dogs are coming out, right? Jobs lost, accountability, like culpability, accountability, like a mofo. There's no way to come back from stuff like that. But yet, Fox News has been able totally. to escape by scot free. Hmm. Yeah, I remember um, when like Hassan criticized, made a joke about Dan Crenshaw, and like yeah. the right went crazy about it. Like that, would that even make this list? Maybe it would be one of 400 things on this list. Like, dude, right. glass houses, seriously. Right. Okay. Um, we ha we have some. More. Oh, by the way, and and Sophie points out, uh, I don't know. Uh, Red Red Cliff's uh, religion, but the idea <laughs> that they might be doing it to get their anti-Semitic audience fired up, I totally, of course. Agree. I can totally. Oh, agree. I don't know that he's Jewish, but but again, right. they they're lying. So maybe they just do an anti-Semitic attack against someone who's not Jewish. I honestly don't even know. Anyway, okay. Uh, some of what Fox has been up to since way, way back, uh, they've been very consistent on. And uh, so I wanna track um, some of the big threads, including things that we are still fighting with now. So for instance, the uh, minimization of concerns about climate change. At one point in 2009, they showed literal just footage of snow with the Chiron saying global what? That 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 I remember that actually. That was a hard one because um, me and my scientist buddies, we'd been cooking up this scheme to convince people that climate change is real, and then it snowed, and we thought we're doomed. Proof positive, we're wrong. But um, that is the level of intellectual honesty and rigor they have brought to the conversation about climate change for <coughs> uh, like going on a decade, decade and a half, basically. Well, John, Fox likes to tout their own experts and these like, you know, Harvard graduates, Stanford Law graduates, all these people from MIT that that, you know, they bring on or for whatever. They'd love to have these experts who are just that, an expert in the field that they're trying to talk about to say, hey, this is what's real, this is what's what. Climate climate global warming is a thing, people. Global warming is very, very real. Okay. Um, climate change is very, very real. Like you you can't you can't jettison. One thing for the other, you can't say, well, climate change isn't real, and then bring on experts who say, oh, I don't know, who say um, that, what, there's a coin shortage or whatever. Yep, that's real. The experts said it. Huh. These are vetted, but yet these same people who are just as capable and also are experts in their field, years, borderline geniuses around the subject, you're saying, no. <laughs> Global warming, yep. are you sure global warming's a thing? I mean, there was snow <laughs> for like a minute at, there was at Mammoth, Mammoth Mountain, California had snow. Climate, you know, it's, it's, oh. it, they, well, they until it doesn't, food. there's no climate change. Right. Um, my God. Uh, another big thread throughout the years, uh, way back in uh, 2009, Glenn Beck uh, started spreading fear about the vaccine against H1N1. It wasn't just on Fox in this headline, you can see that Rush Limbaugh is doing it as well. And also, Sean Hannity had on a guest to fearmonger about the vaccine, saying it had been rushed and wasn't necessary and all this. But I don't know, that makes me feel better. Like, oh, they've been against the vaccines this whole time. It's not a totally new thing, so that's wonderful. Wonderful, yeah. Um, by the way, uh, in 2011, they once again attacked <laughs> uh, people who care about climate change. With this graphic of SpongeBob green pants, they were blaming SpongeBob for indoctrinating children about climate change. The graphic design is their passion, and so are Chiron's. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see some of the uh, support for police violence and you know opposition to popular protest in 2011. Uh, Fox host Megyn Kelly said pepper spray that was used on protesters is a quote food product essentially. That's Damn. a good point. That's a good point. When you pepper spray the, someone, it's food. It's food. Like they spray like ooh, it was it was. Peppercorns from Italy. I, Megan Kelly, you know, God, God, God bless her soul. Now, you know, she's on YouTube doing really cool, very well lit YouTube videos, by the way. <laughs> um, and I gotta I, see this. No, she, the Megan Kelly show is now on YouTube. 
Yeah. It's a, yeah, seriously. She, Megan looks great. I'm as good as Megan Kelly now. I'm, Not because I'm being, I've gotten I'm better, being, but because she's gotten worse. I'm being ridiculous. But <laughs> Megan Kelly, you know, I was giving her giving her a lot of passes. I read her book, um, Stand oh. for Something or Settle for More. Settle for more. And I was like, you know, Megan, I'm I'm here for that. But that complete regression on how I feel about Megan Kelly. Wow. Okay, really fast. I'm gonna I'm gonna quick fire some at you, and then once okay. once I'm done, you let me know what you think. Okay, so that same year, 2011. Fox contributor compared food stamps to a diet plan, saying she'd look fabulous if she had to use them. So why are you worried about not having food? You get thin or whatever. Uh, let's see, in 2013, there was this uh, YMCA facility that allowed Muslim girls privacy while uh, learning to swim. They said that that's evidence Sharia law is now changing everything. If it was any other like fundamentalist that wanted special privacy classes, Christian, Jewish, whatever, they would never have said this. Let's be very clear about that. In 2014, Jesse Waters said that the statutory rape of a child isn't as bad if the female per perpetrator is attractive. And Tucker Carlson said that reporting statutory rape is, quote, whiny. Well, you say, I mean, okay, like, whatever. And you know what? Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlson says that about statutory rape until it, it, it take, until something that's close to him takes a seat sure. at his table, right? People always want to say something is whatever until it, enters their life and all of a sudden they, then they become over over I won't say emotional but then they become more of a victim and they want everyone to share in the trauma everyone yeah. to share in the pain 100% uh final two for Bill O'Reilly 2014 he said that black people should have the words quote don't get pregnant at 14 on their t-shirts that's just stormfront Racism, that's all it is, but it was on Fox News. 2017, he asked if there was any difference between Black Lives Matter protesters and Nazis, because he couldn't come up with any. So it's look, it's bad now, that is totally true. And there might be some ways in which it's worse than it was, but it has always been absolute garbage. Let's be clear about that. Right. And congratulations on hitting 25 years of garbage. Anyway, um, wow, that was too much fun. Uh, we're gonna take our first break. We come back, we get some updates on some um, uh, pretty controversial topics having to do with COVID. We'll have that for you after this. <laughs> I am having too much fun. Okay, um, unfortunately, we do have to get serious for a bit. It'll get crazy and wild again, but let's jump into some serious news. <clears throat> So over the last year and a half, occasionally the federal government has put some money into you know, keeping our society running and all of that. And a lot of that money, you know well, went to corporations. The idea was we give them a bunch of money, it saves jobs, it keeps the supply chains going, it keeps our society working. But did it? Because they got the money, there's a lot of ways that they continue to screw us over. And so we've got this report. From the Center for Biological Diversity's Energy Justice Program and Bailout Watch. And it has to do with power plants, power companies that got tons of money, but still kept cutting power for some reason. So they analyzed 16 different large electric utilities and they found that they collectively received a $1.25 billion bailout, but still cut power to nearly 1 million struggling customers in the US between February of 2020 and June of 2021. And here's the thing, you might say, okay, so they cut it for a million people, they got this money, maybe it, maybe it wasn't enough. But I wanna be clear, it very much was enough. The companies received enough funding to forgive customer debt hundreds of times over. But instead, many handed out executive bonuses and increased shareholder dividends. DTE, one of these companies, bumped investor payouts from 714 million to nearly 800 million over the last two years. While its CEO received a $2.3 million pay increase last year. And many of them said that the cost of doing business became more expensive, social distancing, buying PPE, stuff like that. But they could have canceled every bit of their customers' debt and made sure that they kept having access to their power for just 8% of the bailout sum. And when you think about what losing power, when you can't go anywhere, you might be dealing with the heat of summer and you're supposed to stay at home. They easily could have cleared the debt, Jason, and they just chose not to because they wanted to use the money for other things. And line their pockets. I mean, what do you say to this, John? Yeah. It's, it's, this is um, unacceptable. I mean, what, there was um, someone who was mentioned that his 
his bill was $243, right? And in the grand scheme of things, $243, you know, especially in Los Angeles, that's like half of what your normal utility bill is. But in some parts of the country, that's really expensive. I mean, it's expensive everywhere. And you you hit the nail on the head, 8%, right? I would, I would, I think it was like millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. Eight percent is a drop in the bucket for of, of of what they could have done with that money. But we see this time and time again with with you know over the years with company like MCI Enron. All these people at their core are about lining their own pockets and making sure and taking care of self first, right? That 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 that's it. Who cares? Um, and the simple fact that I mean, you make a you make a great point that. Hey, we're in unprecedented times still. Yeah, we're kind of coming back from the pandemic a little bit, right? Things are the new normal is becoming the new normal now, but it's nowhere near as open or as free, yeah. or people aren't able to move to the world um, as gracefully as they were before the pandemic. You you imagine major metropolitan areas like Detroit, even here in Miami, FPL, which one of the companies mentioned, also took money from from the government in a bailout for throughout throughout the pandemic and served a lot of <clears throat> Sorry, customers' disconnection notices, right? Yep. Um, it goes back to back to even unemployment. You have, I don't want to mention California's unemployment, you know, um, unemployment company, but there's places in states where they haven't given this money, but yet they're still not paying people, and then now they're sending out overpayment notices. Like, well, wait a minute, I didn't even receive money. Now you want me to pay you back? It's all messed up. It all it's all founded in greed, founded in greed and and self-serving nature. I would imagine that's it because I mean, what else can you explain it? The cost well, of doing business was way more expensive because of the pandemic, but only 8% of that money could have been used to take care of this much of a problem in the grand scheme of things. You could have went, around, went on with your day spending the rest of your millions, giving all your shareholders more bonuses, you know, but they chose yeah. not to. Yeah, and we, look, we know oh, both during the, the summer months and during the winter months. Uh, in Texas alone, we had mm -hmm. uh, devastating loss of life um, because of power outages. Um, so if you would like to learn about all of this and believe that nobody died as a result, feel free to do that. I can't make that equation work out. Um, but yeah, these companies, look, th this is just one section. These these power companies, six in particular, were really bad. But we know a similar sort of thing is happening with uh, the money that was supposed to stop people from being evicted. Very little of it has actually gone out to the people who need it most. We needed this help, and thank God we got some of it. But some people made a ton of money off of this. And by the John, way, <clears throat> what what's up? Um, it's interesting hearing about like, okay, so the moratoriums and the end of the assistance throughout the last year and a half when it comes to the pandemic. If you listen to the radio and listen to politicians and political figures talk about it, it's almost as if they have such a disdain for the fact that this money was even given. And they take pride in saying, oh, yep, assistance is ending this week. It's almost like, like it was their money to give away and they're waiting for a return or a repayment of the loan and they're not getting that. It's There's this vitriol. In their voice about that, instead of taking the the, the other side or seeing the other side of the coin that hey, yeah, people have as you said devastating loss of life, devastating devastating loss of a that's like the the pinnacle loss of life, right? Um, but so many so there's so much trauma that has come of the last year and a half that I don't think these companies, as much as they want to be performative and have all these like cute commercials yeah. during Hulu and you walk into Wells Fargo and you see we're doing this, it's BS. Yeah. Because yeah, the proof 100%. is not coming out. We we had we had the the grocery store chain who's like all about their heroes and everything, and then like two of the stores tried to unionize, so they literally closed the entire stores. They just like stopped at those stores. Yeah, they're heroes to you, huh? We're gonna roll right into this next story, which is somewhat related. Um, talked about it earlier in the week on the Young Turks, but I really want to know what um what Jason thinks about this. There's a hospital system in Colorado that says that those who are on its organ transplant wait list won't be offered an organ. And if they were on it already, they will now be denied access to an organ if they refuse to get the COVID-19 vaccine, citing the significant risk that the virus poses to transplant recipients. Several individuals have who have been taken off of the list have talked to their representatives and made big news out of this. But bear in mind, the hospital says, that it's long been standard practice to require organ recipients or donors to get vaccines for things like hepatitis B or the MMR shot that's been there for a long time. 
Uh, the spokesperson Dan Weaver for UC Health, this is the health system says conditions on organ transplants are not new. They say that you have to do vaccinations as well as things like perhaps stopping smoking, not drinking alcohol, demonstrating that you take other medicines to ensure not only that you will survive with the organ, but that your body won't reject it, which is always a concern too. So none of this is really new, Jason, but mm -hmm. the fact that it's ha everything having to do with the pandemic and vaccines has been you know, brought up to crisis levels. So a lot of people feel like this is different, that they should not be allowed to discriminate against the unvaccinated in this case. Um, but I'm curious what you think about this. You know, so I can only speak from someone who can imagine what it's like waiting for an organ, right? Like we talked about devastating loss of life when people don't receive life giving organs that have been on a list for a long time who follow protocols prior. Let's say you've been on, a, you've been on an organ list, an organ donate, or you've been waiting for an organ for four or five years. Mind you, COVID's only been prevalent in humanity for the last, what, 19 months or almost two years now. So I would, I mean, personally, I feel like it is an issue because it's a lot of people, a lot of people, John, still feel. Full disclosure, I'm fully vaccinated. I've done mm -hmm. my research. Me too. I've, I've, I've been able to say, hey, I feel safe to get the to get the vaccine. There are people who don't want to get the vaccine, but also take very good measures and very good precautions to, to not expose themselves and not expose other people to the vaccines with PPE and whatnot. So I think that they are, how do I say this about something like a douchebag? I think some people are using vaccination as they're weaponizing vaccination a little bit, if you will. Um, I think that if someone's been on the, on the or, uh, has followed all the precautions up that's been on the organ donation list for multiple years, they should still be able to get an organ even though they're not vaccinated, right? Because a lot of people still feel like they don't know, there's not a lot of more evidence or they feel they need to do more research and they should have that right to say, hey, I don't wanna be vaccinated, I'll do it on my own time. Um, if I was, waiting for an organ and I wasn't going to get one because I wasn't vaccinated. I think I would personally, I would get vaccinated just because, I mean, what do I have to lose? You know, I've been vaccinated for everything else, but hospitals should also take into account that COVID and the situation is fairly new and the Hippocratic Oath is do no harm. Are we doing harm to people by denying them an organ if they're not vaccinated? Is that sure. is that the next? Is that I, the get, next? I get what you're saying. I will yeah. say that I, I do disagree. I mean, the argument could be made that there are a limited number of these organs. They're gonna go to one person and not another. So if you give it to someone who is uh, sort of opting into an increased risk of dying from COVID, sure. another person doesn't get the kidney and they die. So there's harm being done potentially in any event. But also, and especially we do have to make clear, um, a lot has been said of the, the fact that the mortality rate from COVID is really low. Conservatives are like, you don't need to worry about it because it's so low. Well, it is a significant pre-existing condition for those who've just had organ transplants. So they've done studies for transplant patients who develop COVID-19, 20 to 30% die. So it is all it is like 10 to 20 times more deadly for people who've just gotten transplants than for people at large. And if you can just get the shot and you choose not to, and there's only a few kidneys, there's not enough to go around, and only enough a few livers. Like if you would not give a liver to someone who drinks a bunch, and that is one of the things that can stop you from getting a liver. I don't think that that increases your risk of dying by 20 times, but this does, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I respect yeah. what you're saying, but I, but I disagree. And no, and I you know I you know I and I welcome I welcome that different viewpoint, John, because I think you know the, the numbers don't lie, right? If if they're if they're saying that 30% of people who have had an organ transplant get COVID and pass away, yeah, that's very alarming. I think for me. Two sides of it. If you want to be two minds about it, I think it's you know autonomy over someone's health, right? Taking taking that away, taking away that choice, and that's the conversation a lot of people have beyond being in a, waiting for an organ, right? That's the conversation we're seeing now about. Well, I don't need to get vaccinated. We have companies. My the a company I work for currently has released a mandate that says, hey, if you're not vaccinated or have, or have uploaded proof of your vaccination by December first, your employment is terminated. Within 24 hours, the next day, you know, because we have companies really, really taking a. Oh, sorry, dog. My dog just tried to lick my butt. I um, I know. <laughs> you know, but so John, like, what you're saying, yeah, you're you're completely right. I just think about the choice that people it, that want to have in regards to vaccination. The numbers don't lie. 30% of people will die from COVID after having a transplant. Hey, then transplant. Hey, get get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. Yeah. But um, yeah, for your own sake, if if not. Yeah. For, 
Right, you because know, and you also make a great point too, is that hey, there's there's not like a surplus of kidneys going around, not a surplus of lungs going around that you know, giving you're kind of robbing Paul to pay Peter in this, in this instance because you're taking from some person to give taking from one to give to the other, hopefully successfully. But I think the argument people have now, as I said, in and out of the health system is autonomy over my own health. Why am I being told what I need to do when I've been armed with all the information to protect myself? In addition to getting the code. Given the vaccine, if I choose to choose to not, so I feel like we're at an impasse, John. This is our first impasse on the damage report. I think this is it for the show, for our relationship as <laughs> friends. I think that that's it. Anyway, um, okay, so th- these are our two different stances. We'll we'll see what people think. Maybe we could do a is a Brooke on? Maybe we could do a Twitch uh, poll on that. Um, but for now, we do have to take our second break, and I will remind both our audience as well as Jason that we are going to be live during this break. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we'll have a lot more news after this. Okay, everyone, before we jump back into the news, let me let you know a few things that are happening. Later on today is the power panel, and I will be leading the first hour with Cenk Uyghur and Ben Carollo. Uh, that'll be the beginning of a twitchy uh, power panel because Ravana will be on with Jared Jackson and Cenk uh, as well. You can watch all of that at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time. Should be a lot of fun. Also, we'll remind you, we are in the closing days of this, but not only will Indisputable be on after our program, uh, Jordan Ewell will be on as a co-host, Pedro Gonzalez will be on for debate, that'll be a lot of fun. We're not in the closing days of Indisputable, that's gonna be here. What we are in the closing days of is your chance to help Rashad Ritchie uh, win a best TV anchor in Atlanta Magazine's Best of Atlanta 2021, recognizing his work on Indisputable. If you'd like to do that, it is super simple. Go to tyt.com slash Rashad and type in Rashad Ritchie in the box and submit your vote. You can do this today, you can do this every day until October 11th. How awesome would it be to see Rashad win that honor? That would be great. Okay, with that, we have uh, I think just enough time to do this story. So we're gonna jump into this. There aren't a lot of updates on the legal case against Matt Gates just yet, but that does not mean that he has not been busy in the court of public opinion to reassure everyone that he ain't worried about this at all, he's doing just fine. And it's not causing any concerns personally for him either, the allegations that he engaged in underage sex trafficking. Uh, if you go to his um, profile page on Twitter, you know where I have Bunny Hugger, he has happy husband. He's just a happy husband and a Florida man. One of those two things is true. He is a Florida <laughs> man. But he wants to really reassure you, Jason, that everything's working out just fine. He recently tweeted, my politics are whatever this is, with a photo of him and his wife looking at Either the sea or the flags or both, I don't know. And she responded with mine or whatever this is, and now they've hit. <gasps> and it's not a selfie, like they have a photo crew that took photos of the back of their head. My politics are looking at politicians like this and just thinking, what is this? I don't know. But anyway, they're very happy, Jason, which means there's nothing to worry about, which means there's no case against Matt Gates. That's what I'm getting out of this very carefully crafted PR effort by Matt Gates. Oh, man, I am too. You know, social media is just really crappy. Okay, so good good analysis on who took that picture. Who, who did they hire <laughs> to take that picture? Secondly, I hate these living your best life shots these couples do, especially here in Florida. Florida, things that happen in Florida, people park their cars on their lawn, weird. Trucks oh. parked on lawns everywhere and photos like this with Matt Gates and his happy wife. But this is what his base, they wanna see, right? They want good traditional values, right? We can forgive everything as long as you you make amends, you get back to what matters, that's being a good husband, being a law abiding citizen and putting the Lord first and standing for America, that'll get you <laughs> off. Seriously, that'll get you off, because that's, that's, what, that's what essentially what he's saying. And that's what people yep. do, you, you, you hit the nail on the head, John, it's a rebrand for Matt Gates. And all the pictures you showed leading, leading up to that, were uh, he's so smug. But um, you know, he, I, I feel like Matt Gates is gonna get away with a lot. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Yeah, we've we've talked about this a few times. It's entirely possible. We're gonna have in just a moment a little bit of an update on it. Um, but the it's not just people on social media that are noticing him going really hard on the no, I swear we're happy thing. Uh let's see, a Republican who worked with Gates in Florida said it's definitely been noticed. It's somewhere between look over here magic trick stuff and maybe pretending the investigation isn't happening. 
There's not a lot that Matt Gates does that isn't in some way, shape, or form very carefully crafted image management. <coughs> Apologies. Another Florida political insider said, Matt is all about the optics. If you told me tomorrow he's adopted a baby from the African continent, it'd be like he's firing on all cylinders. That's a weird example to give, but um, but sure, he is about the optics. And uh, bear in mind, these optics don't come cheap. I can't say for sure that these are the people that took the photo, but we do know that he paid $825,000 to the Logan Circle Group for advertising and strategic campaign consulting. In like a one month period earlier this year, he spent 825,000. They also spent $20,000 to Roger Stone's Florida firm Drake Ventures LLC for strategic campaign consulting. Um, apparently for the $20,000, they advertised that he should uh, dress up like Two Face everywhere he goes. They decided not to go with that advice. I think that that was probably a good call. Roger Stone, it's not all hits with him. But anyway, um, yeah, they want you to believe that everything is just fine. And I look, I sort of get that. And speculation about the the personal life is probably pointless. But it is Friday, and I don't care anymore. I don't buy it. I, just I don't, don't buy it either. Buy it. No, don't look, if it. people that John, people that have a happy life, if your truth is your truth and be, and your life is truly that, you don't have to have a highlight reel to show that, right? Also, man, mm -hmm. his his. That those are those sums of money to pay to fix stuff is just indicative of like, yeah, he gets he he Matt Gates is a smart guy. He realizes that you got to invest, and in, it's like a bad episode of Scandal. He hired Olivia Pope to come in and fix the situation, <laughs> and he paid over a million dollars for it, close to a million dollars for it. And this is the and this is the, the the return on his investment, right? This is what yeah. they told him to do. And pe politicians that are that desperate to to stay in the zeitgeist, to stay in control, to, to get whatever power they're trying to to get to ascend to whatever level they want to ascend to, a price tag is yeah. nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. Hundred percent. Like that, that you know, that's that's pocket change. <sighs> he would probably would have spent more if he could. I just it, it bothers me for the reasons we've said. It also bothers me because it 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 really preempts. My wife and I paid $100,000 and we had a photographer come and it was a photo of the back of our heads watching Squid Game. And now it's just gonna seem like we're mocking them when it was really what we wanted to do with $100,000. So thanks, Matt Gates. <laughs> but anyway, um, he's still facing these allegations. By the way, Joel Greenberg, former Gates associate, uh, has pleaded guilty to sex trafficking 17 year old, said that he witnessed Gates having sex with the 17 year old and that she was paid to do so, Gates has denied. All of this, but the update recently, we didn't report on this, is that Greenberg's lawyer this week asked a judge to delay his sentencing another five months until March as Greenberg continues to cooperate with the government. That might mean that he has more. It might also mean that he hasn't delivered enough. So maybe that's good news, maybe that's bad news. I'm honestly not even sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was a cute picture. Yeah, I bet yeah. you they. I bet you they have like really like just like boring sex though. They're like a boring sex couple. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jason. I mean, granted, it's Friday, but it's Friday. No, <laughs> no. Now, I do want to mock him just a little bit more. We're not doing a full story on this, but I, maybe this is the last of the Stephanie Grisham things dropping. But Stephanie Grisham says that when Trump quote needed someone to tell him how awesome he was. He'd call Matt Gates, who would sing for his supper. That is so <laughs> sad, man. And like, it's not sad because you're, you know, you're the hype man for somebody. That's not sad. You can be the hype man. Man, if like Bernie needed me to talk to him every once in a while and tell him he's great or whatever, I'll do that a little bit. I'll sing for my supper. But it's who you're doing it for. He ain't great. Why are you so excited about this guy who sucks so bad? Yeah. And by the way, she also said. He would do anything for Trump and a TV hit, though not necessarily in that order, which I love. And it's totally true. That true. is so totally true. he is. Anyway, okay. Uh, I did want to let you know the results of the poll. Thank you to Yeetwood Mac on Twitch for doing this poll. Should the unvax stay on the transplant list? Yes, had 0% of the vote. 100% of the vote for no. Damn. They have thrown Jason out of the window. They have. And <laughs> let, let me just say, look, I, I super agree fast, super fast. That. We got to close. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I'm just saying to two sides of how to, how probably I some of them are thinking about it. What you said, because I respect <laughs> you.
Anyway, everybody on uh, our linear platforms, thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate you being here. If you're on Twitch or on YouTube, we got way more where that came from, including throwing away some garbage people of the week. That's coming up after this short break. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.